Hi, my name's Penny, and as usual, I'm here to talk about some bookish things. Specifically, today we're going to be building my TBR for February, and I'm going to use the TBR machine like I normally do, which is a website I made that spits out random reading prompts. This year, I've decided to use it to pick three books every month off my TBR shelves, although in January, even though I didn't read the books I was planning, I did manage to reduce these shelves by 26 books. Uh, which is going to make this challenge harder and harder as I have less and less books to choose from. But I am excited about trying to get these books down to zero books to read. I don't know if it's possible, but we're going to try. Also this month I do have a big pile of library books, which I'll go into a bit later, but there's some thick ones in there. And I still have half of the diviners to read from January, which is a book I borrowed from my sister. So I've already got quite a lot to read for February. So let's hope the TBR machine will be nice to me. So let's see what the first prompt is going to be. Read a book that it seems like everyone has read but you. That's hard because a lot of the books on here are like ones no one's ever heard of, but hmm. Um, okay, so I think but the two most read books on these shelves would be either Red Queen by Victoria Aviad or The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I was going to try and save this for Spookathon at the end of the year, but actually it's been a while since I read a thriller physically rather than listening to the audiobook, so I think I'm going to go with this. I don't remember what it's about a girl on the train sees a murder from the train, something like that. So we'll pick this. Hopefully it's not too hard. 400 pages, but we could probably manage it. Okay, on to the next prompt. Read a non-fiction book. That isn't even part of these shelves. I mean, I put it on the website because I think it's a good prompt for people to read more non-fiction. But if I read a non-fiction book, that's not helping to get my TBR shelves down. However, I do have a couple of audiobooks, which I'll touch on later, that are non-fiction. So I'm going to skip over this and do another two prompts. But I do have a non-fiction book that I'm going to read this month. So it's kind of covered. I guess that's how we're doing it. We're skipping over the ones that don't make sense. Next prompt. Read a book by an author you haven't read anything from before. This is perfect for these shelves because there are a few. Let's see. Okay, so for Christmas, my brother actually gave me this book. It's like a horror, I believe. It's actually, I really like the inside cover. It's kind of crazy. And then this outside cover actually has secret images on it. You can't see it, but if you look at it from an angle, you can see that the inside cover is actually on the outside. Anyway, I don't know much about this other than it's like a horror manga, so it should be quick to read, which we know February is a short month. We know I've already got enough books on the shelf, so let's go with an easy option. And also, I really should get to reading my Christmas presents, so I will do that. Now, on to the last prompt. Read a science fiction book. I have to decide whether I want to be mean to myself because I know what I should read, but I don't want to. <laughs> so... I should read The Skies of Pern because I have quite a few books on this list from the Dragons of Pern series and one of my goals for this year as well is to finish or at least continue series that I have in progress and this is a series that there's still a lot more books for me to get through so I should start getting through them. Um, but I've been putting off reading this because I don't know if I'm going to like it. But I'm not ready to unhaul this series until I get up to the ones where Todd McCaffrey is writing this series as well as Anne McCaffrey. There are definitely other science fictions on this shelf that I would like to read more than this. And I know this is going to take me ages to get through because it's like 450 pages and it's tall. So there's a lot of words on a single page. But like this is what I should read if I want to meet my reading goals for the year. I'm going to do it. I'm going to read this book. So if you don't know what the Dragons of Pern series is about, basically there is this planet and semi-regularly this other planet passes nearby and this thread falls down and destroys anything it touches. But the people on the planet have these dragons that are able to basically burn the thread in the air before it causes any damage. But because sometimes there's like 
hundreds of years between this thread falling. Um, at certain times, the Dragon Riders don't always get the respect they deserve. There's all sorts of political shenanigans going on. This book, I think, is like the 17th book in the series or something. Anyway, I'm going to read that. So that means this is my pile that the TBR machine has picked for me. It's not, it's not too bad until we add these other ones. So the other book I need to read is The Diviners by Libra Bray. As I said, I am halfway through. It's basically a supernatural murder mystery set in the 1920s and there's also a bunch of people appearing who have different supernatural abilities. To be honest, I actually think the story is just getting started despite being halfway through. So it's slow, but I'm gonna finish this. I mean, I'd love to finish it before the end of January, but I just think that's not very realistic or likely. So then I also have A Cathedral of Myth and Bone by Kat Howard. Kat Howard is the author of An Unkindness of Magicians, which I read last year and I really enjoyed. This is uh, a bunch of short stories. And I don't normally like short story anthologies, however I do like Kat Howard's writing and so I'm willing to at least give this a go. So hopefully I will end up liking that. I also have Starsight by Brandon Sanderson, so this is the sequel to Skyward, which was one of my favorite books from last year. I really love Brandon Sanderson's writing. This is a YA sci-fi. We have this girl named Spencer who is training to become a pilot in this world where humans are basically trapped living underground because whenever they try to escape the planet these aliens come and attack them. Spencer however has really struggled with this whole pilot thing because her father was also a pilot but in this big important battle he ran away in the middle uh, and so that reputation has really hindered her family's acceptance in this world. I really love the AI character in these books and just there's so many things to love about this. I really hope that the second book is going to be great as well. Then I also have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. So this is one of the 20 books that I wanted to read in 2020. I'm really hoping I'm going to love it. Um, I believe there's a girl named Alex who has been given a scholarship to Yale but she also has some kind of supernatural abilities and uh, she's part of this secret society that like polices the other secret societies that do all this kind of occult magic. I believe it's quite dark. I hope it's actually dark because a lot of things that other people say are really dark I don't think are that dark. I think I just have a high level of tolerance for darkness but I'm really hoping that I will like this and it won't be a slog because it's relatively long. Okay so these are the books that I'm hoping to read in the month of February. Is this at all achievable given that I have a lot of other things to do? I'm not really sure but I'm willing to give it a go at least. So then as always I do also have a big list of audiobooks that I'm hoping to get to. Um, firstly I do have Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. I've read Elantris before but there is a Cosmere read-along happening this year and so I thought I would reread it so that I'll be more fresh in some of those conversations. And I really love Elantris. Basically got this city where people used to be like gods and have these magical abilities but then one day they suddenly came down with this plague type thing where you grow these growths all over your body and you're essentially like a zombie. I don't know, I never know how much to really say about Brandon Sanderson books because usually what's really going on is kind of a spoiler because it only gets revealed as you're reading the book. But I will say everybody always says Elantris is Brandon Sanderson's worst book and I think that gives people the impression that it's not a good book but I really like it so I'm excited to reread it. I do also have the audiobook for Vow of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. So this is the second book in the Something of Thieves series. Is that what it's called? No, no it's not. Well the first book was called Dance of Thieves. Um, I don't, I, th I assume it's a trilogy because this is kind of like a continuation series from the Remnant Chronicles uh, which I really liked. I don't think this Thieves, Dance of Thieves trilogy is as good but it's still okay and the audiobooks make them quick reads so I'll be reading that. I do also have a couple of non-fictions as I talked about earlier. So firstly I have Never Get Angry Again by David J. Lieberman. Dr. David Lieberman. I know I mostly don't seem like an angry person on booktube and mostly I'm not angry but I used to be 
a really angry person and I still have sometimes little bits of that uh, and it's something I don't particularly like about myself so if I could never be angry again I would be super happy so I'm gonna read that book another nonfiction that I have that I should get in the month of February is how to change minds by Rob Jollies Jollies don't know how to say that uh, this is one that just came up when I was looking for something completely different. Uh, it's a really short audiobook, so I thought, why not? There's a cat on the front, so we're going to read it. And I'm also hoping that my hold will come through for The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is another one that's on my 20 books for 2020 list, so I'm doing well with that list. And as I said in that video, I don't really know what this is about, but I believe Erin Morgenstern's writing is meant to be really beautiful. So I'm hoping that I'm going to like it as much as so many people do. Then I also have The Mage Fire War by Ali Modisett Jr. This is the 20th book in the Saga of Recluse, and these books tend to be quite long. I think the audiobook is like 20 something hours long, so it's quite a long one. Um, this is a world where some people have auto magic, some people have chaos magic, and it really just explores the idea that neither of them are necessarily good or bad. But also the stories are really practical, the people in the books are always learning really practical skills, uh, and I think it's a really interesting look at how magic can affect normal people's lives but of course it's set in like a historical fantastical setting so it's not normal normal but I enjoy these books especially when I can read them in audiobook form because otherwise they're just way too long. I'm a little bit concerned because he does sometimes go in to war tactics a little bit laboriously and war tactics are not my favorite thing so hopefully even though there's war in the title there won't be too much war in the book but we'll see. And then the last book that I have on hold here is The Knowing by Sharon Cameron. So this is the sequel to The Forgetting. Again, I'm making progress on my goals, making progress on series. Uh, the Forgetting was this thing where every 12 years, everybody in this village forgets everything and they basically carry around these notebooks where they record everything that happens so that then when they wake up, every 12 years having forgotten everything they can read the notebook and know what's going on with their lives. Uh, unfortunately the system is open to some level of corruption and people do things so that when they wake up they essentially have new lives uh, and we're following this one girl though who didn't forget everything last time. Quite a lot of reveals at the end of the first book so I'm excited to see where the series will go next. I think it's going to be very different and that's pretty much it. I do also have The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson on hold but it's saying about four weeks so I'm not sure if it will come through in February or not. However, if it comes through I will be prioritizing that over every other audiobook because I'm really excited about continuing that series and finishing it off. So that's lots of books that I'm hoping to read in February and it's a short month so maybe I'm crazy but wish me luck. And of course, best of luck to you in your reading endeavors for February as well. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I'm going to be reading in February and whether you think I'm going to like them. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're having a really wonderful day and I will see you next time.